welcome back. This is Michelle from Michelle's Empty Nest. And today I am very excited to be joining Shuin Tam, who is Shoe Puff Creations here on YouTube and Instagram, um, for her Stretch Your Stamps scrapbooking series that she does every month. And she collaborates with a few different people on a different topic about stamping or uh, in this case, how to organize your stamps, all things organization. So I was so happy when she invited me to join in and I hope that what I share with you will be um, beneficial to you, that you will maybe pick up a tip or two. I, I don't think my system is you know, rocket science or anything like that, but it works for me and it gets the job done. And if you're looking for some inspiration on organizing your stamps, hopefully I can help you out a little bit today. So I'm going to go ahead and um, talk to you first about how I store and sort my stamps. And so you'll see I have three different sizes of envelopes, plastic envelopes, and they are all from Avery L. And we'll talk about the sizes and where I get them and all that stuff as well. So I'm going to um, show you now where my stamps are stored and kind of how that system is set up. Okay, so as I mentioned, I have all sizes of my stamps stored pretty much in this one area. So about two thirds of my space is going to be three by four and four by six stamps and they're mixed in together. So if you can see, let, we'll look at this one. You might be able to see it a little bit better. I'm in here kind of at an odd angle because of how my craft island is in the middle of the floor. Um, so we're kind of at an odd angle here with my tripod. But so for instance, by the well for God, these are all stamps from them. So all of their three by four stamps are in the front and then I go into four by six stamps. And if we look down at my six by eight stamps in a bit, you'll see I have a space for By the Well for God six by eight stamps as well. So I do sort by manufacturer, and I think there's probably two main ways that you probably could sort stamps, and that is by manufacturer or by category. And it just kind of depends on how your brain works. My brain goes to, to manufacturer first. And so that's how I have them separated out alphabetically. And I just have a laminated piece of cardstock. I just cut them to the size I needed, um, made a label for them, laminated them, and then they can go in between my stamp companies. Um, within each set of stamps, I organize in a certain order. I'm very OCD. <laughs> I like things very organized. And so um, my setup is, is pretty specific. So I even have a little card that I go by and I just keep it hanging off on the side over here on a um, little um, clip, a hook from... Um, oh, my mind has gone blank, a little 3M hook. Um, and I just leave it hanging up. And so if I need to refresh my memory, I can do that. So I, I go by alphabets, numbers, shapes and art marks, hobbies, life and love, everyday activities, food and drink, months, seasons and holidays, travel places and God and faith. So these categories are the way I'm going to find stamps. So I'm always going to have alphas and numbers first. So if I look here at Felicity Jane, this three by four stamp, it is not an alphabet stamp. That lets me know right away, I don't have a three by four alphabet stamp from Felicity Jane. In fact, I don't have any alphabet stamps from Felicity Jane. I just have the girl stamps and they are alphabetized in there as well. Um, I know if I want to look for something about travel, I'm going to go pretty far to the back of that section before I start looking for travel because it's not going to be up here at the front with the alphas. So that's, that works for me to know that the stamps are in here in a certain way. So they're manufacturer first, but then they're still by theme after that. So if I look here at... Um, Let's see here at 
by the well for God. I've got one, two, three, four, five, five alphabet stamps in the three, uh, four by six size. And then I go into shapes. And so I've got shapes and art marks next. And that is what my piece of paper told me would happen. Shapes and art marks would be after alphabets and numbers. Okay, so that is one way that I keep my stamps very, very organized, and it's the same setup for everything. Okay, so I'm going to kind of switch you around here and look at a different angle, and we'll talk about a couple more things. All right, so my 3x4 and 4x6 stamps were in here based on the containers that I have. So I have three of these containers that are divided. These are all meant for refrigerator storage and they're perfect for storing a lot of different things in your craft space. So um, I have three of those, as I said, and that right now holds all of my stamps. And I do have a little bit of space left over and my plan is not to get more stamps than what I have space allotted for already. So <laughs> um, that kind of keeps it in check because there are a lot of stamps here. Now, I did want to mention, I do have a little set of stamps that just kind of hang out by themselves. They are all book related. And so, because I use these often in my book journal, I keep these just laying here separately. They fit nicely right there, you know, without having to move anything else around. And so, those are separated out for me. Then you'll see I have two tubs or bins of six by eight stamps. So these bins are a little wider and they're just single. They're not a double. And they fit perfectly a six by eight stamp down in these pockets. So these are the extra large Avery L pockets that I use. And um, they are set up the same way. They're alphabetized by company and then they're within my little system of, of themes. So there's gonna be alphas, and then after that, somewhere you're gonna find everyday life, and then at the end is gonna be some travel or some places. And so they're all the same setup inside. I do want to mention the, um, the stars that you see on some of them. They are also hanging on my little command hook. That was the name I was looking for earlier. They hang on the same little command hook, and I just use these little stars that your teachers used to give you on your papers in class for doing a good job. And my, my um, coding system is if there's a silver star on my um, stamp, then it has a coordinating stamp of some sort. So for this one, because it's an uppercase and a lowercase, they're, they're not a perfect match, but they're both Allie's handwriting in uppercase and lowercase. In my mind, that's a coordinating stamp. Um, let's see, I've got, um, two from Heidi Swap here that I'll show you. The Honey and Spice and the Blue Skies Alpha. They are the same. One just has distressing and the other, other one doesn't, and you can mix and match them. So that's a coordinating stamp in my mind. If it was an outline and a fill stamp, they're both gonna have silver stars on them. If there is a gold star, like on this one from Waffle Flower, that means that it has a coordinating die set. And I store the dies right in the back with um, on magnetic sheets, and I'll show you those as well. There's one other color of these little stars that I use right now with my current system, and that is a blue star. Um, let's see, something that you can see from this angle. We'll go with Vicki Booten back here. So I have um, two stamp sets from her that have silver and blue stars on them. The silver star tells me there is a coordinating die set. 
and the blue star tells me that it goes with a collection. So I usually know whether or not a collection comes with a stamp set, but if I'm in a hurry looking for something, seeing that little blue star will jog my memory and it may be that I'm working with that particular collection or I think maybe it might work better than what I'm using right now. So it just kind of serves to jog my memory sometimes. Um, and so I do use the blue stamps as well. So I, I can know right away by looking at a stamp set if it has a coordinating stamp, a coordinating die, or if it came from a collection. And I just find that to be very, very helpful. Okay, so I wanted to show you how I store my Avery L pockets. So I just used one of my Alex drawers and just these, um, I got a huge bag of these kind of vinyl bags from Amazon and I just use those to store a lot of different things here in my craft room. And so you'll see there's one for small Avery L pockets, one for large and one for extra large. And so within there, there's the size of, um, of the envelopes as well as typically some paper that's already cut to size. And to help me remember that, you guessed it, I have a list. <laughs> On the back of my list of categories, I have the sizes of the stamp insert papers that I need and it tells me the kind of paper that I use so they'll be consistent. And then also, and I'm hoping you can see this because I can't really tell. Um, and then I also have the size of the magnetic sheets of how I need to cut them for the different sizes of um, stamp sets that they'll be going behind. So that is also stored here in this same drawer. Put that down. Right here is my magnetic vent covers and they come from Amazon as well. Okay, so let me show you what they look like as well. The magnetic vent covers. They are a good size. I wanna say they're maybe about eight by 15 or something like that. But this is the size, hopefully the whole thing is in the camera. Um, so they're magnetic and I think the other side may be uh, sticky or something. I'm not sure. I've never tried, but uh, this is two sheets. So they're, they're fairly thin. You can cut them right on your trimmer. I've never had any trouble cutting them um, with just my regular paper trimmer, my Fiskars trimmer. And so you can cut them to whatever size you need. And like I said, I just kind of keep a, a, um, a list to remind me so I don't have to keep going back and remeasuring the bags. And then also if I have dies that don't have a stamp set, I still use this same size of, of setup here. And this drives me crazy. Y'all ignore that right there. I changed my size a little bit. And I don't, I don't round these fractions down. I'm a former math teacher. So the fact that it's not rounded down is also kind of driving me crazy. But when I'm at my trimmer and in a hurry, it's just easier to find six than think about what the whatever would be on your trimmer if you're trying to find three eighths or whatever. So <laughs> I just leave it like that. Um, so let me go ahead and put you in another position and we'll talk about something else. So from a very basic standpoint, if you are just starting out and wondering what kind of things might come in handy in your craft room to help you with organization of your stamps, um, I like to have those manufacturer cards laminated just so that they'll hold up better because they get a lot of use. So I use the Scotch laminator for that. Um, this particular one I have probably had for 15 to 20 years. I've been out of the classroom for several years and I had it for quite a few years while I was teaching. So it has held up, it's not very expensive. I'll make sure I link all of this stuff down below from Amazon for you. Um, but I use that and then just the little pockets that you get that go with it. And you can put those in there, laminate them, and they come out nice and sturdy and you're good to go. 
And I've also had this label maker for even longer than I've had the, um, the laminator. I want a new fancy one, but this one just keeps plugging along. Um, it's battery operated, but you can, you know, change the size and font and things like that. So very handy for organizing of many things, but also while you're organizing your stamps, it really does come in handy to be able to label them. I also wanted to show you one of the little shelves on one of my carts here in my craft space. I have four carts that I use, um, but the top shelf of this one I leave for stamping supplies. So I have all of my acrylic stamp blocks here. I have my stamp chamois as well as the rest of it that you can cut out. I use the absorber because it's, it's much cheaper, you can just cut off what you need. Um, and then I have some wooden stamps. That's, um, I only have those in this little smaller set, so they just live in here. This is where I store all of my extra um, roller stamps. Not all of them are dates. Some of them have uh, phrases and things on them as well. So they're all stored there. I have my little uh, pressing down tool for my big Misty which is stored right down there. And then I do have a stamp cleaner from Stamping Up, as well as a smaller um, stamping um, platform as well. So I have that area and it's just all right there, handy, ready to go. I couldn't talk about stamps without also mentioning briefly um, how I store my ink pads. So I have eight of these um, acrylic storage pieces from scrapbook.com and my husband has attached them to the wall for me. So again, I'm using that vertical storage space. I'm not taking up a shelf or anything like that. I'm just using wall space. I don't think they're all gonna quite fit in there unless I move back, there we go. So um, all different manufacturers here except for Tim Holtz and then some things that I have in smaller sizes. So I have like all the Studio Calico, all the Ali Edwards, all the Paper Person, um, scrapbook.com, close to my heart. They're all separated out in rainbow order. And I do have a little room to grow there. But after that, no more stamp pads for Michelle. For my Tim Holtz Distressed Oxide stamp pads, I use these that came from Amazon. I have two of them to store those inks. And um, I don't have the whole collection in the full size oxides. I have most of them. And then I do also have the newer colors in just the Distressed ink as well. So I have an oxide and an ink. But I store those here um, on a shelf because they just, uh, I really needed somewhere specific for them since I have so many. And then I also have these little tins that Tim Holtz sells that um, have all, I'm gonna try to keep the glare off. I have the full set of minis in the inks. So I have all the inks in the minis and most of the oxides in the larger full size. So I just keep those again by rainbow order in these uh, tins. There's one, two, three, four, five. And then I have a couple of other tins down there. Oh, this glare is really bad. Let me see if there can, there, that's a little better. Um, a couple of larger tins that store some of the archival inks that are like this. These don't fit, so I'm needing to get another one of those. So I have two tins of the archivals. And then for some smaller ink pads like the Catherine Pooler ink pads, and then I have like some chalk, um, the, um, what's it called? Versa Magic, the little dew drop things, and then some Nuvo Hybrid as well. So I just store those in tins, and that tends to work well for me for the smaller ones. It just keeps them corralled. And again, they're kind of, you know, coordinated and organized by color as well. Okay, friends, I think that just about does it for how I store my stamps. 
and my ink pads. Um, I do use a digital system as well. It's an app and it's called Airtable. And I may do just a quick, short, separate video that screen captures how I go about using that app. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check out that video as well. So again, thanks to Shuen for inviting me to participate today. The other people who are participating will also be linked below. So you'll wanna check out their videos as well. I'm interested to see if there's something that I could work into my system from what they do. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them below. Most of the products that I have come from Amazon, a couple of things from scrapbook.com. So I will make sure to put links for all of those in the description box below as well. And I so appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with me today. It means more to me than you will ever, ever know. And if you enjoyed the video, I would love a thumbs up down below and please consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. So I'll try to get some close up shots and share them here at the end of the video as well as over on Instagram after this goes live. And until I see you in the next video, take care of yourself, do something good for yourself, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.